Today on 16-Bit Game Review, I hit a wall. I hit another wall. And finally, we get to listen to Professor Ludwig von Drake. Hello and welcome. Today I want to start off with Rare. Now Rare is really well known for their platforming games specifically on the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo 64, like Donkey Kong Country and Banjo-Kazooie. But they're also known for some of their racing games like Diddy Kong Racing and RC Pro AM. But I know Rare for one specific Game Boy game which I've owned since I was a kid. A little known racing game called Mickey Speedway USA. Mickey Speedway USA is a top-down isometric racing game, much like RC Pro AM. However, it's actually a sequel to another Mickey racing game called Mickey's Racing Adventure, also for the Game Boy Color. He is racing because his dog Pluto has been dognapped by the weasels. And Mickey decided to go call all his friends to help him. And they've all agreed and they all go out and race against each other to get Pluto back. What? Why are they even racing? Why, especially against each other? Because they're all going for the same goal. Get Pluto back. You're not even racing the weasels. You're trying to catch up with the weasels. But that would make sense if you're on, let's say, a road. Not a track. This makes no sense whatsoever! The only person that's going to win out of all this is Mickey! Mickey controls very well. Your standard racing controls are there and has not been touched. A and B are still acceleration and braking respectively and the D-pad is still used to move the vehicle left and right. However, the confusion sets in when you realize that you're out of buns and you need to use an item. This is when the D-pad's secondary function of using items come in. You have to press up on the D-pad to shoot an item. And this is extremely confusing, especially when I was five and I didn't want to read a manual, and that was because I didn't know how to read, and I would accidentally use an item, and then that item would send me into a wall, which would send me bouncing. Yes it is, because when you hit a wall and you start to bounce, you're at the mercy of this game's broken physics. And my god is it ever broken. Just watch what happens when I crash here. The racing in this game is fun, assuming you are Mickey and you're very cautious not to hit anything. Which is a very tall order, especially if you're racing as Donald, Goofy, Pete, Daisy, or Minnie, because every single one of them controls like crap. Donald, which is my personal favorite, controls like he's sliding on ice. He has the right speed, however, you're never going to make a corner because you're just going to miss it. Pete and Goofy control exactly the same, and they're way too fast, especially for their cornering speed, which means that you're going to just miss a corner altogether because they won't be turned in time. Minnie and Daisy are the complete opposite. They're not fast enough, but their control is so sensitive that you're going to crash yourself into a corner because it's way too twitchy. You can kind of say that they're the easy mode, but honestly, the way I feel this game is supposed to be played is by being Mickey. And that's still an extremely tall order since the AI is retarded. The first issue is that the AI have no spatial awareness whatsoever, which means that they'll cut you off when you're in, trying to go into a corner, they'll block you on the way down, and because of the isometric view, you're not going to be exactly sure where they actually are on the track. And 9 times out of 10, you will hit them on a straight, bouncing into a wall, and then bouncing again. The game's music is pretty good. There's lots of tracks in here which I would recommend putting onto an MP3 retro gaming music list of some sort. One or two tracks even have me tapping my foot, so keep your ear open. If you hear something you like, go find it. It's really good. The 
The track design is brilliant because every single track is narrow, which means that even though you're moving at slow speeds, you will always be in the action. No matter how much stuff is happening on the screen, something will always be happening. So, let's say you're just by yourself, you're still going to be clenching while you're going through the corners. And when there's another person on the screen, oh my god, I'm shaking trying to make sure I don't hit anything. Because if I hit someone, I'm going to start to bounce. And that makes for an extremely fun game. Unlike other racing games where you have miles upon miles upon miles of runoff. And every single corner is not really a breeze. It's sort of a, can I actually get through this with more of a boost or will I be able to pull a little bit ahead of someone else rather than being concerned will I be able to make it out of a corner at all. Mickey Speedway USA is not only a very fun game but it's a very cheap game so I would highly recommend this game for your collection. It does have faults and there are issues with it like the bouncing but you can easily overcome that issue by moving from a Game Boy Player to a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance. The controls are a lot more responsive on those hardware, and it's honestly a little bit more fun to play it on those two systems. So if you ever see one, go and get one. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, please check out some of our other videos in the annotation below. As well, give the video a like and or dislike if you agree or disagree with my opinion. As well, give us a subscribe if you like our content and you want to see more of our content on a week-to-week-ish basis. As well, please like us on the Facebook and follow us on Twitter since doing anything with us will feed monkeys, which make the channel go around. Anyways, thank you for watching.